band that's been together for 21 years. That's cool. But a guy who's been doing the same late night radio gig for 18 years. That's uncool. Yeah, that's yeah. very bad. It's no, tenacity. it's just like you guys seem like teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Your voices are like old. <laughs> Wait till you see our scrotums. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> we got. I got. I got some. I got something for you tonight. That's disgusting. It's about what I want to do with my life. Oh, what is it that you want to do? Who loves this. We want to be free. We want to be free to to do what we want to do. And we want to get loaded. And we want to have a good time. And that's what we're going to do. Well, when are you going to go? We want to do what we want. We're going to have want. a good time. <laughs> we're going to have a party. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a drop from the beginning of of the mother station yeah. out here k-rock yeah and and, and uh I don't know, we don't want to get too nostalgic tonight, but I used to listen to Love Line for the years when I grew up in uh, L.A., and I, I listened to Bad Religion, and uh, so it's kind of uh, kind of weird being uh, the old new guy here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's... Uh, <laughs> the old new guy. <laughs> He's the new guy. The old guy amongst the old, old guys. <laughs> the medium old amongst the super old elite. Kimberly? Yeah? You're 16, what's up? Um... I've had three different sexual partners, and I haven't been able to orgasm. Like, I think I might have been close, but I'm not sure. You're 16. Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, that would be normal for a 16-year-old, okay? It's very, it's rather unusual to find someone that can have an orgasm during intercourse at 16. What I'm concerned with is why three different guys already? Well, 16, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. But that's, 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 that's like one every five... Point three years. How sixteen are you? When's your birthday? You, you know what I mean. That's not bad. I'll be seventeen in February. All right. uh, everything, everything going okay? You stinking yeah. whore! No, yeah. I didn't say that. Can you orgasm when you're alone? No. Did Did the guys do the oral sex thing? Yeah, and that like isn't like it's not any better than sex. Are you feeling really tense when you're uh, intimate with someone? Not no. relaxed. No, not at all. Like hmm. at first, the first time I have, but now I'm really comfortable. Have actually. you have you been with one of these guys for a while? Um, I've been with all of them for a really long time. The guy that I'm with right now, who's gotten me closer than anything, has been my best friend for like three years, and we've been together for like almost seven months. Do you really care about him? Yeah. So, did, do you tell him that he's gotten you closer, like the other guys? They just yeah. they were like twenty five he percenters, he, he but he's up. It, but he's what? He denies it. He denies that, that he gets you like, close. Yeah, he's like you're just saying that to make me feel better, but you know, yeah, some, I tell him. sometimes the problem can be if you put too much emphasis on orgasm, then no, you actually it, it's uh, not, right. It's not that important to me. It's just I want to know if there's like something wrong because I have a friend. Who has like a million times, you know? And I just feel like you just you just need to find your spot. You haven't found your spot yet. Yeah. And I think moreover, you need to understand that there are some people that just do it a million times, have no problem with it. Women have a greater spectrum of responses. Yes. Yeah. Most are not finding their spot until they're eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, at least. Yeah, I mean, uh, Drew, you can uh, back me up on this. A woman's sexual prime is much later than a, a teenage much male, later. right? Much oh, later. Yeah. And in some, in women, like I said, it's all over the map. Guys are real consistent. I mean, how much does the average 16-year-old guy vary sexually, and how much does the average 16-year-old girl vary sexually? I mean, it's quite a bit. Yeah. And I believe that some women just you know, just essentially bogart the <laughs> orgasms. They, they hoard. You know, so Connie over here is having 75 and I got nothing. Yeah. Give me one of those. Yeah. They're, they're like some sort of uh, land barons or something or, or sl slum lords or something. They hog all of the orgasms. And, and poor Kimberly. Can, and the more Kimberly focuses on it, the farther away she's going to get from she, it. She can't orgasm by herself. It's not going to happen with a person. It's really not. It's just relax. It, it can if you find... It, this is my it's advice. Though, tell them. Whatever you do, do not buy a vibrator. Because you're having trouble. Right. Oh, ow. And, oh. and, and you resort to the vibrator, then what will end up happening is you get hooked on that thing, and then you'll never be able to do it with a, right. without one. Yeah. It's taking the easy way out. It's like <laughs> I'm getting on the steroids or something. Oh. So it's just working out. You'll pay down the road. James? Yes. You're 42? 42. Oh, 42? 42. 22. 22. 22. 22. Okay. Screen mm -hmm. says 42. Oh, well, now I know why the screen says 42, by the way. It's by the, <laughs> by the way James pronounces his own 42. age. 42. <laughs> All right. If you're 42, James, why are you calling Loveline? <laughs> no, 22. 
22, on with bad religion. What's up? I don't know a whole lot. I've been married for two years, been with my wife for four, uh, got a daughter. I insist every single night. I, I dream, well, practically, I mean, there's a couple of breaks in between, but pretty much every single night I dream sexually about other women other than my wife. And, and I don't know why. Are you, are you sexually active with your wife? Uh, you know, once a month, obviously not what I would prefer, but... Once a month? What's going on? She just, she never wants to, I mean, she barely ever wants to have it. Is she, did you just have your child? No, nah, well, she's three, so... Three? Is she on medication, your wife? Well, yeah, she's on antidepressant, it's three of them. All right, well, that will shut her down pretty good. She's on three of them? Yeah. You, you got to talk to her doctor about this. That, that is not really an acceptable state to be in. It yeah. can really affect your relationship. The, you mean the, the once a month? Yeah, that's not... Oh, that's, God, I'm blessed with once a month nowadays. It used to be once every three. All right. Three well, you, you talk to the doctor. I agree with Ruth. Tell him you're going to need some roofies. Yeah. And, uh... No, the, the, again, no. the medication really can shut women down terribly. They'll describe sort of feeling sexless, like, the, like there's no sexual around. The sex doesn't even make sense to them, sort of an uncomfortable nuisance. And that's the biology they get in. It's more so than what women feel around well, here. I, right? I know. It's, it's, it's more just like out and out fear. It's like tying a shoe. Sure. Is, is she on the antidepressants because of a postpartum depression? Uh, just depression, period. She's pretty much been depressed all her life, and I didn't know that when I first got with her because she was, like, smoking so much pot. She was always happy, so... Right. And then when she quit smoking pot and had the right. kid and all this, that... This is why you don't get pregnant at 17 and, uh, you don't get married at 20, though, right? Well, she's 25. Oh. <laughs> wow. She, she was 21 when I got with her. I see. And you were... You were 17 and 18? I was 17. Wow. That sounds like, uh, good times. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, has she been through a lot in her life? Yeah, a whole lot. She's been yeah. through a whole lot? Yeah. Okay. We got that. Okay, this is, this gonna be, uh, this gonna be some work here, James. You know what I'm saying? But you, yeah. you signed on for active duty. You got a kid, you got, you got a wife now. Yeah. This, this project is yours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. These, uh -huh. I, 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 I don't know how to convey it to the guys when they, they hook up with these, and, I, and I don't want to say that women who've been through a lot don't need to be loved and don't need relationships, but having the kids and getting married before the work has been done is 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 uh, is a trap that a lot of guys fall into. And it's seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I mean, you're so ill prepared to deal with this. You got somebody who's you know alcoholic dad gave him a little abuse. They're kind of spinning around. They got depression problems and maybe some chemical imbalance. You pop out a couple of kids and get hooked up with them and then realize 3 years into the gig that hey this person is it needs some serious work. Yeah, Drew? Yeah. We get paid the same or huh? Okay, thanks, buddy. <laughs> what, I have a seizure or something? What, you think your, your good looks is pulling us through radio? You just uh, sit there like a ham? <laughs> Again, you were off on a jag, and here's what I heard. <laughs> so let me tell you about high school football, Drew. All Central Valley. First team, offense and defense. And let me tell you, there's no parade for the Corolla boy when he came off that sideline. But I played every. Did your parents show up for any games? Not one. Not one game did they show up to. And I'll tell you what, I still hate my dad for it, but at least that son of a bitch Alexis. You know why? Because he's so pathetic. He's so pathetic, Drew. If only someone had paid attention. Are you listening? Huh? <laughs> what? There's a little reenactment of us on a plane. Oh, yeah. Drew trying to study for his, uh, his uh, re-ups on his medical boards. Me with a couple of highballs in me going <laughs> off on a tangent. Yeah, the part that you don't get that you can't really recreate here is it, it, that tirade going, I'm checked out. All of a sudden, there's silence. It's just, all of a sudden, it stops. And I'll, I'll, like, I'll, like, suddenly, like, I've become aware that the, 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 the tone has changed. And I look over, and he'll have like the lovey shades on, you know, the glide glide. <laughs> Shades over his eyes, yeah. feet up, out, tongue hanging out, well, gone. That's when the ambient kicks in and mixes with the Bloody Marys. And uh, but don't worry, I'm just recharging the batteries. Drew. I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> Amber. Yeah. You're 17. Yes. On with right. bad religion. Oh yeah, I want to know what's up with no one giving uh, my bad religion props. They're just calling for their own problems. Thank yeah. you so much. It's good to know somebody is actually thinking out there. They're, they're yeah. very selfish, our callers. They're Thank all putting right. their hands in their air like they just don't care. We can't give back if people don't give right. to us. I That's... love you guys so hard. <laughs> hard. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, yeah, I have a question for Brett. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, Brett. So how were you able to stay productive, like, in your drug days and stuff like that? Uh, like, you know how some people, like, like shut off to the world and some people can, like, just be, like, enlightened and stuff? Like, how yeah. do you take um, I was never productive during my drug days. Uh, my productive years always uh, were in between when I was when I was clean. And I'm just not one of those uh, people who, who are productive uh, um, or creative um, when they take drugs. I, uh... In fact, we would go a long time without even seeing Brett when uh, he would basically um, sh go away for a number of years without uh, really even keeping in contact. I'm not sure yeah. I've actually met that person that is actually genuinely more productive or more creative when they're on drugs. Yeah, it may be a myth, but, you know, I mean, well, uh, we've all heard about the Jimi Hendrix and the Miles Davis who are, who are quite creative on, you know, with their, with their drug. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you... Um, during my uh, my period of of using narcotics, I, I was very very unproductive. Can we get high? Sure, of course. What's that? Even like with acid and stuff. Uh, yeah. Even you know, even before I crossed the line into addiction, whatever that means. But I think that you know, there is a point when that happens, and uh, uh, <clears throat> I. Uh, I, I, it, it never really, you know, opened a door to creativity for me. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen for some people, um, but uh, but not for me. My, my experience is that um, my periods uh, when I've been clean and focused, I've been much more creative and productive. Hey, Amber, you, you ask like you're asking for a reason. Oh, hmm. yeah, because, you know, I do, I dabble. That's what I figure. So, yeah, yeah, I just want to know if, like, me being smart, you know, on the drugs would last or what You I get to be smart. <laughs> yeah. Not quite smart. There's ton, smart. tons of studies that show that people feel like they're smarter, believe they're more creative, and yet when they ask people then to reassess what they've created off the drugs, they think it's crap, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I've been the same way. I think you write stuff down and it's ridiculous. Like that loss of inhibition, like, lets you, like, like flow with your ideas. Yeah, but you're on drugs. Yeah, but yeah. this is this is like saying you're a better fighter when you're drunk. <laughs> right. You're not more coordinated. You're not stronger. Your your you're reflexes less, less aren't inhibited. better. You're, you're, you're less inhibited. Yeah. You, a guy can hit you with a table leg, and it's not going to do as much damage because you're loaded and you're numb. But it doesn't make you into a, like a more skilled fighter. It just makes you more apt to fight and more accepting of it. Yeah, you know, I think drugs can often be a, a, a social lubricant. You know, but it's it's not you know. Uh, creating is something that's uh, takes um, yeah, takes, but, takes focus. It's, it's a different it's a different thing. Don't right. encourage Adam with that social lubricant talk. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that would that that social lubricant is something I probably would have invented when I was high on mushrooms. <laughs> Sorry about that. When, when I get high on mushrooms, I would stare at the TV and I would see a Lee Press On Nail commercial, and I'd go. These chicks take long pieces of red plastic, man, like where their claws are, and they stick them on to make them longer and to attract That's the males so of their species. Yeah. Whoa. And yeah, it, the whole theory to that. And then the next commercial would be a monster truck commercial, <laughs> and, be, and they'd show the crowd going nuts and be like, Bigger trucks, smashing smaller cars, and the Species crowd rose wild, man. Where are we living? <laughs> the hours rolled by, and the days went by, and you went, oh, i got to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallucinogenics do tend to make things seem profound. Yeah. They, they, they do, yeah. You start calling, like, you stop like you stop calling your buddies rain, you start calling them evil presence. <laughs> Angel of death. You are an evil <laughs> presence, dude. I cannot handle this. The worst is uh, when you have some obnoxious, but when you start mixing drugs, like you're, you're, you're getting really groovy on the mushrooms and some friend shows up all coked up oh, and, yeah. and he's like spazzing out and you're like, whoa. Well, you, you know, there's a sharp contrast between the highs. That will not, that, that will not do. That will bum the high out. Evil pot smoking hand jobber. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that guy? Oh, Jimmy's chicken shack. Uh, it's <laughs> blowing my phone. <laughs> Marie? Hello, Marie. Yes. You're uh, 25. Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I work in a restaurant. I'm a bartender. All right. Um, my problem is that I work with a bartender on a weekly basis, whose um, roommate raped me two years ago. Uh -oh. And um, now he's stealing, and I want to say something. But why, why don't you? 
Well, I'm afraid of what his roommate has told him, of what is going to happen. His roommate also works for the company. The, the bartender stealing. Yes. Who's not the guy who raped you. No, different. His did, roommate. But his roommate. Did you get the guy who raped you? Did I? What do you mean? Did I get him? Did you press charges? Did no, you? I didn't. How uh, come? And um. How come? I guess I was afraid. I mean, I still am. But. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, and. The, the guy who's the uh, bartender who's stealing, what kind of relationship do you have with him? I mean, we're semi-friends. I mean... So why, if you're, just just as play devil's advocate, this, the bartender is sort of some guy who works there. You just happen to observe him stealing. Yes. Uh, you don't have a great affection for where you work. Right. Uh, you're afraid of his roommate. Right. Why, why are you contemplating reporting him? Because I don't want to get uh, in trouble. How would, because I, how work, would, I work with him on the same shift. Oh, and, so the register you, would come up short? Yeah, or something. I mean, he's not, well, yeah, basically. Ha, has it? Uh, not in the past, but it's not necessarily stealing money. I mean, it's stealing, you know, other things as so, well. So like, no, what, no. what? What's he stealing? Glasses, well, liquor, posters, liquor. swizzle sticks, things yeah. like that. I'm how would he go bigger than the volume? How would I get some no, sugar? I'm, talk, I'm talking about liquor and beer. How would anyone know that you know? Um, because I'm working with him behind the bar, which is very small. Okay. And uh, aren't bartenders very, supposed to steal, cool. by the way? I thought I mean, that was that, the, isn't that, that's a rule that you sign gig. on. Pretty like, much, you get some places, amount of free stuff. Places. But the place I work at is, you know, backwards, and it's very corporate. I, I want to know why you're friendly with a guy who's roommates with a guy who raped you. Uh, I don't know. I can't understand that. That, that so. seems like a that seems I, like I mean, a, a red flag for me. Well, I, I, as well, that combined with the fact that she didn't go after this guy. Well, so, I was friendly with him before. But it suggests that that victim is a role you're familiar with, and people close to you have victimized you. Yeah. So what happened? I'm not sure. I don't know. What happened before though? Like you know, with your family. With my family? Yeah, I mean, were you ever victimized um, no, I mean, earlier? Not, not per se. Like, I was never, like, you know, molested or raped or anything. No one ever no one ever hit you? I don't know. I mean, I had, didn't have a great family. Like, you know, my brother was a drug addict. And, and did he ever do anything? My mom tried to kill herself. But other than that, like, uh, I mean, I, not me personally. I haven't been victimized. All right. No one ever, no one ever raised a hand to you growing up? No. And, and does this bartender guy who's stealing know that his roommate did this to you? I mean, I haven't told him. I don't. What, the, what I'm worried about is what his roommate told him. You know, he probably told. I don't know the way the way he is. I think he probably told. You know, my. You know, the bartender that I work with that. You know, yeah. I'm a whore and I slept with him. You know. All right. Well, yeah. what, what's um? I, I I sort of agree with. Uh, I think it's Greg who said sort of. I don't know what's it. I mean, I, I would either him. if you're not going to press charges against this guy, I would just kind of turn my head the other way. I mean, well, why why dig this whole thing up? I, I'm did really you, concerned, though, about the, the, her judgment with whom she is close with, why she is so easily victimized and plays that role so well. Well, what happened with the rape? Was this a date rape? No. Well, I was I was hanging out. I mean, I work in a restaurant. I was a bumble bartender. You know, we all went out after work. We drank a lot. And um, I ended up back at my friend's apartment. I didn't even really know his roommate that well. And, uh, you know, everyone went to sleep, and I sort of passed out. And when I woke up, I mean, he was raping me. And what'd you do? I told him to stop. Right. I told him I didn't want him to, you know, and he, you know, basically held me down and Ugh. raped me. And could you scream? I mean... Were you just too loaded? I, yeah, I was there really were other, drunk. There were other people there, right? Uh, there were only... It was only him and his roommate at that point in time. Everyone else had gone home. All right. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Like, I want to tell everyone, just bring everyone to justice, but... Uh, on the other hand, I know it's kind of like unrealistic. Do you, is there any part of you that wants to file this with the yeah, police? I mean, I mean, now it's been so long. I'm really just, I don't think, I, it's, I'm it's, afraid of what, you know, what everyone else would say because I don't think, I mean, I think it, it's really going to be perceived as the fact that, I, you know, I was really drunk and oh, big deal. You know? Well, you're not going to get this guy this far out. There's no way. But you might be able to establish a pattern. So if someone else does step up. Right. You know, you Especially if there's already something on this guy's record yeah, of these that, kind of complaints. That's the point. And it also breaks this pattern that you seem to have of being a victim. Right. And well, again, well, I, I, I really... I'm, I've actually done a pretty good, good job of, of changing that by now. Yeah, but you know, uh, you, you sound, I mean, maybe with the victimization stuff, but you sound angry and... And like, are you, how you know? I don't think you're that concerned about this guy stealing, but it sounds like you sound angry. 
That's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if I'm only concerned about him stealing guns. No, I, I don't think... His roommate raped me, you know? I think you're right. pissed off. That's I, right. I think, obviously, you are, because this guy's walking with, you know, 46 bucks every night, and who gives a rat's ass? You're right. getting people loaded, and they're driving off the road for a living, so what do you care? You, right. know, you know what I mean? I mean my job. Yeah, who, there's not that much. I mean, look, I wish I was a bartender back when, but there's not much nobility in it. Everyone steals, and right. that, that's the name of the game. So... Focus, I mean, take some of that anger that you have toward this guy who's uh, stealing and focus it toward the guy who really did the damage. And I say it would be a cathartic experience to go in and just report this. And then like, somewhere. Just go in and talk to somebody. Ask them, some, look, it just happened a year ago. Here's what happened. What do you think? Can I file a complaint? There's what should I do? got to be some earlier trauma. Got to be. All right. Mm. Well, be, you know why? You know how you know, by the way? And I know this is, it sounds... It sounds like we're piling on sometimes because stuff happens to people. And now, instead of focusing on the a-hole who did it, we start focusing on them and why it happened, you yeah. know. But we we know there's something going on because when, when people that um, grow up in a good environment and are sort of healthy and, and strong emotionally, when someone jumps on them, they just start screaming bloody they, they murder. They rip their nuts off. And they don't, well, yeah. you're drunk and yeah. you're passed out or whatever, but you don't you don't freeze up. And that's the victims like freeze up, and and that's what makes them victims, and, then, and that's what happened to them and years then, and ago. And they don't do anything. They don't, afterwards. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't do anything yeah. afterward. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And now she's mad at his roommate because he's taking forty six cents worth of liquor every right. night. Right. She 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 should report this. Uh, I'm sorry for what happened, but but focus on the real crime here, not yeah. the uh, the uh, focus on the uh, felony, not the misdemeanor. Oh, okay, that's good, right? Really Beautiful. Well yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. I was going to say that. Thanks. I often have to coax that out of people in the room. <laughs> Bad religion here. Uh, oh, we're going to hear something off the uh, new CD, right? Thank, thank you. Thank thanks you for the peanut gallery out much. there. When, it's when great. We, you guys got a live audience now. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back. Hey, everybody. Bloodline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Over there, Bad Religion is our guest tonight. It's great to be back. The, it's great to have you guys Did back. I already mention that? I said that. The uh, Process of Belief is the name of the new CD. It is out January 22nd. So uh, not just yet, but uh, be waiting. Brett and Greg and Jay are all here from the band. We're going to uh, hear something off the new CD in just a moment. I think uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, play, take a take a uh, call, then uh, play a song. Right. 311 is in here tomorrow night, and then uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Anthony Kiedis is going to be in here uh, next week. So that ought to be uh, interesting. And let's huh. get to the phones and uh, speak to... Mike, who's uh, 25. Mike? Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, Mike. Um, let me first say, hey, uh, Adam, Drew, you guys are great. I've followed you through four states now. Huh. Uh, I've called numerous times. Oh, really? Wow, thanks. Where, where, What were those four states, out of curiosity? Uh, Minnesota, uh, New Mexico, Texas, and now Colorado. Wow. Uh, Texas and Colorado, I get you guys uh, on a 23-hour delay, but uh, I used to when I had a radio. Um, and you had a radio? Well, I had a radio, and unfortunately, it got taken away. <laughs> taken away? <laughs> well, that's Who would take a guy's radio? That was brutal. Who would yeah. do that to a guy? <laughs> In this day and age, come on. That was one of my exes. Oh, that'll do it. it no, was I understand. You know, they, they sell more of them. Well, they're, they're available for purchase. There's a place. Uh, it's got the name Radio Radio Shack. Right in the name. <laughs> right, right in the name. Right in the name. Right in the name. You can't miss it. It's well, a Tandy nice. Corporation. That'd be nice right. if I had money to go buy a radio. Right. No. You must have <laughs> lots of trouble with relationships, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> one of your exes rips you off, and you're still calling about another one tonight, and you've called Loveline multiple times. <laughs> well, it's a bad I, sign. I, I listen to you guys all the time, and you give me. You always give good. <laughs> all right. What's going on? Um, well, lay down the base story. Um, I was dating a girl for three years. We moved from Texas to Colorado to go to truck driving school together. We met this individual, this other girl up here. My girlfriend was a bi-curious, and we got into the re relationship with the other girl. So we had, you know, a live-in threesome going. Yeah, but those always work out. Oh, this is, the, yeah. I, I was out? wanting to be Same the one thing that with me in truck driving school. <laughs> Um, what, what did you say, Mike? Yours, yeah. yours didn't work, though, right? Well, no. Um, no, but they always do. Well, but listen, Ray, I mean, Ray, I was just yelling at my buddy Ray, that's why. Oh, Drew, you condemn, you condemn, um, 
not only truckers, but but people who live. Truckers. You don't like truckers. <laughs> you don't like. I, I condemn people that you, think you want that your you want your good ship cross country, but you don't want to know how it got there. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying not. about you. But he, here's the deal: it, it's not. Do you think it's the people who are living in these these threesome relationships, or is it the threesome relationship? It's both. I would contend that if uh, if if me and you and uh, any 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 member of Bad Religion decided to really get together and have a good threesome relationship, we could pull it off. Yeah, no. but for only one night. No, no way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then yeah. it's over. You can't continue it. It's not an ongoing thing. It, it's well, it. it yeah, well, you, you want to you want to hear my slant on this? You see, the problem is that most people who uh, who invite a partner uh, into bed with them uh, do it to fix their relationship, and they do it when their relationship is on the rocks, thinking, "Oh, this will add some spice." That's exactly the wrong time to do and it. And they're chaotic people in the first place. It's only those with the strongest possible relationship that can uh, that can withstand get, this. That can withstand something right. like that. That's why yeah. we need to do this. Not not you know a couple going to trucking school to Mike? without a radio. Well, we thought that we were good. Um, yeah, that's all the other problem. They all, each one thinks that we're the ones. Well, yeah, we, yeah, we got before we got and, and, into and the, the fact that they want the threesome sort of su suggests they're not. Oh, you know, right. it, it, well, it's circular. Well, well, we were all in love with each other. Oh, we yeah. Okay. Get Very much in love. Oh, yes. I never yes. heard that one before. All right. I have. They always work out. All right. So, well, listen. Listen, Drew. Calm down over there. So you had your hey, threesome. I wanted to find my righteous indignation again. We give me a break? <laughs> I know. But now you got to lose it because yeah. it's bothering me. Can we hear some of the lascivious details? Yeah. yeah. What happened? I mean, we have to. I'll send you the videotapes. No, we don't need to see um, it. Just tell us. Well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll close your eyes and picture a couple gals in truck and school. <laughs> and, I'm uh, thinking cut off shorts. With a guy with no radio. Merle Haggard tank top. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm picturing uh, like a, a, a fishing hat fashioned out of bud cans. <laughs> I'm thinking a mechanical bull. And when she gets angry, she starts reaching for her tobacco to throw it at you. You uh, guys, not all truckers are like no, that, okay? No, that's true. That's no. true. We're, Knock it off. No, no, no. The, the the one girl was uh, one of the. She worked for the truck driving school, and we met her there. See? Okay, that's was she a lot lizard? <laughs> no, she was actually very beautiful. Um, she was a teacher. Uh, well, well she's, not really. She set up the she pilots. Um, I started to feel that I was losing both of them to each other. Right, right. And I got frustrated, and uh, I have one of those anger problems, and I hit a wall, broke my finger. Right. Um, and then Those always work out. This, uh, well, because I've always taught never to hit a, hit a woman, right. so Smart I enough. didn't hit my fiance at the time. I turned around, and hit the wall. Right. Yeah. Not a good idea. Right. Broke um, your finger, and that was the one you used to activate the turn indicator. So you were thrown out of truck school and, and got oil spotted by the two girls because it was all over, and they left you behind. Um, Fast well, forward, yeah, radio they, gone, hand in a cast. On the they doll. moved out uh, to the one sister's place, and a week later, after I booked my hand, my fiance, who I had just asked to marry me, um, you know. All right, said, Mike. Mike, let me let me uh, let me just uh, jump in here for a second. Do you have any kids? Um, no. Good. Good. Okay. Here, here's what I want to say. There about was you, a Mike. kid involved, though. Okay, but not 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 of your loins. No. Okay, fine. So uh, here's here, works here's out. what Very I, 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 I think we can all agree on this, Rama. Mike. You're 25 years old. You have no kids. You're not married to any of these uh, crazy hillbillies. You have an you see, it sound like an intelligent guy who sort of there, there's something sort of articulate or interesting about Mike for a guy. Look, put it this way. Well, he's called you four times. Yeah. Right. He's very interested in helping himself. Yeah. Well, but right. what I'm saying is, is right. if you read Mike's resume, you would expect a different sounding guy. Yeah. All right. All right, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like one of the guys who played the banjo from Deliverance. Or Mike is interested like in self improvement. Clearly, right. Mike. Mike truly is. And Mike, you, you got a good mind and you're not strung out on drugs. We don't think. You're not, right? Not really. You, not really? I use pot every now and then. Okay, but you're not strung out on a substance per se. You you don't have a bunch of illegitimate kids. You don't have a bunch of exes. You don't owe anyone money. You're not wanted by the police, right? No. Okay. It's, it's time for you to sort of focus a little bit here. Stop getting caught up with these chaotic women. Stop living in the past. Do something about the anger. Find your niche in life. Think well, about what you want to do. Your, your mind works fine. Once you go to school, study for something, get a career, and move ahead in life. You sound like my fiancé. Um, oh. You got one now? Or is this the old no, one? No, the ex-fan. All right. Listen, screw her. She's in the past. Stop, stop 
you, you got a lot of anger in you. Yeah, you well, got. My question was, you know, I'm stuck here a thousand miles away from my family, and I'm not a suicidal person, but you know, occasionally that handful of time in OPM kind of looks good. Um, Adam, I don't will you I, not tell people they sound good ever again, please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you really are pissing me off. Sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. No, no, he sounds like a, like his mind works okay. Doesn't well, sound like until an idiot. that last statement, I agreed right. with you. But yeah. well, this was, I mean, three year relationship. Everything I've known, everything I've lived for. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, he's the two of them? Yeah, of course. But these two are nut jobs, Mike. You're not that stupid. You're, you're, I don't think you're that stupid. I just think you're depressed, and you gotta, you gotta do something about that. Well, that's a, because my, I, you know, I have a decent job, and here in Colorado. But my thought, and I have this problem that I run away from my problems. Um, my thought is that maybe I should, you know, just kind of vanish off the face of the earth for right. a while. That that is a thought that comes from profound biological disturbance of your brain. We call that depression. And the, the quality of that thought is a, a sort of expression of how bad that situation is, how, how much you're affected by your depression, by your biology. So let's go get that taken care of. So Where? Give me somewhere to call or something. Give me the, give me the Maybe you should get book. off the pot. Give me the resource book. Uh, this, this means i got to move? Yeah. Can he... Can he why don't you talk to him uh, during the break and right. we'll play a bad religion right, right, song. Right, right. Okay, yeah, let's let's do that. You still have to lean forward. I, I know, but let me let me just throw it to the song, and then I'll uh, get the thing. Oh, you want to go to break, Anderson? Yeah, we can't squeeze a bad religion song. Let's just play like the first ten seconds of the song, and we'll fade out. Go to break. That works. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's. Giants. Thank you very much. That was good. Can we, can we hear? <laughs> All right, we're past break. Make Pat? sure you don't lose the guy on the phone. I'm a little more worried about him than the uh, bad religion song. Good about. angle. Good angle. <laughs> that's going to move some product. <laughs> We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. We'll be Unit back with uh, the uh, concerned bad religion after this. Hey, everybody. Love line. Bad religion in here tonight. 311 in here tomorrow night. Greg and Brett and Jay are all here from the band. We're going to hear something off the uh, new CD. I think we should just uh, hear it now, right? Yeah, that or you keep rambling and we'll miss this hour. (laughs) (laughs) It's a possibility. The Process of of Belief is the uh, name of the new CD out the 22nd of uh, January. And uh, this one is called Sorrow. Love that bad religion. Thank you, guys. That was Thank a great you. song. Thank you, very much. We guys are too. Really kind. enjoyed that. We're steeped in old timey. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was real nice. Nice uh, guitar work there, Brett. That oh, was was you playing? That was right? me. Yeah, fantastic. See, you know what I like about that song? Never heard it before. Enjoyed the hell out of it first time around. Thank, Thank you. Hard sir. to say that about yeah. a lot of songs. Yeah. You have discriminating taste. Yeah. I can see you are a man of taste. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Bad religion, uh, everybody. The process of belief is the name of the CD out on the 22nd of January, and uh, I'm going to see him at the Acoustic Christmas on uh, Saturday and be uh, real happy. How many? Uh, let's see. How many songs do you think you'll do in a half an hour? Oh, yeah, about 40. 65. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, old and new and uh, everything in between. Yeah, we'll be playing that one, and we'll be playing some of the uh, old favorites. Great. Yeah, we just want to, you know, basically let everybody know that the record's coming out and uh, thank K Rock too, because yeah, they're, they're playing the damn thing. Can you believe it? Yeah, well they should. Yeah. I'll uh, be real happy to see you guys Saturday night, David. Uh, hi. You're uh, 16. Yes, yes I am. What's up? Uh, I just wanted to say hi to Bad Religion. You guys are like absolutely my favorite band in the whole world. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thanks hey, for David. calling. Uh, yeah, Greg, you're just absolutely brilliant, like comparable to John Lennon or Jimmy. Ooh, Green. nice. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, That's okay. how he thinks of himself, interestingly. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was just bragging about that when we were at break. You did, you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know... He called himself John Hendricks, actually. <laughs> Brett's, Brett's just awesome, too, and you know, thanks for getting back together. Yeah, um, we're happy too. I wanted to ask you guys, like, two questions. Uh, what do you guys feel about what's going on in Afghanistan right now? What the United States is doing... Is that number one? Yeah, and okay. the other one was just, could you explain the song to Cease? Like, I just think it's amazing. 
right. Well, <clears throat> luckily we just got back from a promo tour of Europe where we were asked this question virtually every day for a week. And uh, we, what we basically have, uh, you know, we've been kind of silent on the issue because it's a it's a pretty serious topic to talk about. And we, you know, we are a band. We're not uh, political leaders. But we do sing a lot about social issues, and basically, um, you know, the we are not pro-war. We don't believe in in war. We 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 suggest that you avoid war at all costs. And, I'm against uh, it. Dropping bombs on on people is not uh, what we're all about. Um, however, well, I, to be I, fair to us, we do kill a lot of our own people <laughs> with, with the bombs. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and it's also hard to say. Uh, it, it's really, you know, the, the, the thing is so fresh and new, and uh, we get uh, so uh, so little information from uh, from over there. You know, we hear the same news every day. Uh, we pounded Kabul. Uh, um, you know, I, one thing I think that we can say with certainty um, from the, the stance of bad religion is that uh, as a result of this war on terrorism that uh, many of our civil liberties may be in danger. And I think it's important for uh, for young people and bands and watchdog organizations to make sure that um, that uh, our civil liberties are, are protected in uh, in this time of crisis. I, uh, the thing that happens to me with these, uh, in the time of war is I start incorporating some of the language into, uh, my everyday conversation. Like, uh, I got a stronghold, which is my garage, you know, and you, you just, these things like stronghold, you, you know, the Taliban stronghold, yeah, you, you, just, you, you just hear about it every day and, and, uh, you hear about, uh, uh, the theater. And you hear about sorties. And your opposition bunker forces. Busters. Right. right. Your, you, your roommate becomes your opposition Right, forces. right. And you go, I'm going to do a sortie down to the Circle K. You guys need anything? <laughs> you just start, like, working, working in the lingo. That That's really my favorite part. That's true. David? Yeah. So that's an important part of the uh, <laughs> right, what's going yeah. on over there. Hey, do you have a second question for the guys? Yeah. Um. Just for Greg, uh... Uh, on the gray race, you you write a uh, C's. I, I just think it's an absolutely fantastic song, and I spent literally hours not doing my homework <laughs> analyzing that song. And I just want to know what you think, what what you're trying to convey. With uh, well, that song, you know, it's uh, an interesting contrast because it seems to be almost nihilistic in saying everything must cease, but uh, somewhere in that. Um, a seemingly negative uh, statement. There's a. It's surrounded by a, a bunch of hopeful um, elements that uh, you know. Because basically, I believe that even though we live in a closed universe and uh, we live in an, a, a place that I don't believe in um, spirituality in the sense that it's projected to us from some higher deity, I don't think that's meaningless or hope, hopeless. I think, in fact. It gives us uh, the option to look for meaning in the world we have here. That's what I like about Greg and Bad Religion. If any other band gets asked that question, it's uh, whatever you think means to you. Whatever it means to you, man. I don't know. I was pretty jacked when it's, I wrote it. So I don't well, remember. it still comes down to uh, interpretation. And the best thing about music in general is that uh, the listeners get to interpret it. The way they, the way they want. Yeah, yeah and and it, and it, you know, if you think about it, it wasn't them who broke up with this girl that you're writing about. It wasn't them who got fired from this job or had their dad kick off or something. So, why not just take whatever the energy of the song is and sort of translate it into whatever their life is? Yeah, but at least Gr Greg has some meaning in this song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, why not the people writing it also have something that they put into it of their own? That's right. Right, like what I did with, I remember Ferris Yaka all those years yeah. ago. I kind of turned it into my own family strife sure. and pain and, you know, worked that, twisted that around. Sure, the whole Davion was yours, too. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea it was about a uh, French cook. Or what, what the hell is that? What's that, what's that song about? Alouette, chante, alouette. Alouette, chante, alouette. We'll be right back. Right. Vive la France. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. Bad Religion is our guest tonight, and we'll be back with them after this. Hey, folks, Love Line. I'm Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Brett, Greg, and Jay are all here from Bad Religion. 
Process of Belief is the name of the CD out on the 22nd of January, and we'll hear another cut off of that CD sometime in this uh, 11 o'clock hour, 3.11 in here tomorrow night, and is 3.11 playing uh, the uh, Acoustic Christmas, too? Yeah. Sort of makes yes, sense. Yes. Good. They're not playing the same night as us. Oh, they're playing oh, Sunday night. They're playing the second night. Well, they're a good band to see live. Yeah, good too. guys. Yeah, and good guys. So uh, we'll uh, look forward to them Sunday night. All right. Let's uh, take some calls and start off with Andrew, who's 15. Andrew? Hey, what's going on? Hey. Hey, Andrew. Hey. Hi. Um, I have a really strange birth defect. Um, I was born with a third leg. Uh, it's not a complete third leg. But it's got like the foot and the toes and everything. And it's sort of coming off from the pelvis. And I was wondering if this could be passed on if I were to have a child. Well, it'd be a different leg. Uh, uh, no, he actually wants to pass this leg yeah, on. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It, it's, uh, it can't be passed on. It, is it, uh, well, wait a second now. How, how long is this leg? It's like, it's not the size of a normal leg, though. Right. How long is it? It's about the size of my femur. Uh, you know, that's, that's your knee. So it's, it's pretty pretty good size, though. It's like 18 inches. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not like a whole entire leg. Oh, wait, no. hold on Does a second. Does it go straight out the side or just down no, the no, side? No, like, I have, I have hardly any control over it. it yeah. There's it, no balls it, hanging under it, is there? Because I, I know what that is. No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost like it's not... It, it's no. like I can't control it. Right. Like, but does it does it kick out on its own and curl the toes up on its um, own? Sometimes it'll sort of twitch, but that's about it. Do you feel it? Yeah. I, like I can't. Uh, you think I, it's possessed? I don't have control over it. You can feel it, but, but you don't I, have. Hold on a second. Hold on. True. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. The band is falling apart here. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wouldn't this thing, if this was a legitimate call, wouldn't this thing be removed at birth? Well, that's what I want to find out. Why hasn't it been removed? True. Why aren't you laughing? No, because I'm I'm listening. I'm still taking this in. Doesn't it sound like a bogus call to you? Yeah, no, it doesn't. No? No. Yeah. Have you Anyone seen ever call you tripod? <laughs> you, you, you name the defect. It's happened. I, I know, but it, this guy's 15 years old. He wasn't was born in the 1800s. I mean, this out. thing would be removed early on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't Maybe there's something about the way... He, the I, even my cheap parents would have popped yeah. for the removal yeah. of my third leg. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have to see it when Do you're you have parents? Grow. Right. What? Did, Did, what, what why wasn't this removed? Do you live with your parents? Um, my mother couldn't afford it. She really didn't even have the money for it. How about now? Now, uh, she passed away. Well, no, you. How about she, she can't afford the removal, but she can afford three shoes? <laughs> no, I, I'm living with my aunt right now. What she die of? What? What does she die of? What does she drive? What Your mom she, What does she die of? Oh, she died of cancer. Okay. She, she was a smoker. And where's your dad? My dad is in North Idaho. And he's uh, not in your life anymore? No. How come? Uh, he moved away when I was really young. How come? I don't know. He, I guess he said he didn't like the city. Like he's more like you know the country type of person. Yeah, I think I like the beach. I think I'm gonna leave my family behind too. Yeah. You know he he was always you know living out in the middle of nowhere. So your main concern is if you can pass this on to the next generation. Yeah. No, I don't know of any specific genetic. There's no way to pass this. this on. Although strangely, do you smoke a lot of pot? No, I no, I don't. The strange, well, no, him, yeah, him, your on. dad. Oh, you're him. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of some interesting orthopedic, weird orthopedic birth defects in um, sons of heavy pot smoking dads. They but smoke the, a lot yeah. of weed, your dad? Did you hear that in Reefer Madness? Or no, it was, in, it was reported in a medical journal. Really? It's yeah. interesting. Listen, I, he, but developmental uh, traits like this normally aren't passed on to the next generation. Not, this is not, not a, a genetic, part of a bigger syndrome. No, anyway. this was some... And, and uh, Andrew, you can't smoke weed because you can't get high and look at a third leg. You just go out of your mind. Oh. I, get, I, get, I get high and look at a zit and go insane. <laughs> so, Andrew... Um, oh, wait a minute. Where is this thing coming from? My pelvis on the left side. Pelvis, left side. Why don't you have it removed? Uh, right now, it's like, I don't know. Like get thrown off the easy. soccer team? We don't have the money for it. Go to the county hospital, LAUSC. You're in Torrance. Go to the county hospital. Go to, or go to, go to the uh, on, harbor. You, you shouldn't be able to wear pants. Yeah, how do you wear clothing? Oh, how, my, how do you... my aunt is a really good seamstress, and she she's able to, like, make special pants for me. And 
Okay, wait, 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 we got to compete. You should go to Harbor Medical Center or USC. Can we just take a vote? Just get yeah, it. Yeah, we have five guys in here. How many think this is a real call and how many think this is a fake call? Well, it doesn't I, matter. I, I, for... I think it's a bogus call. Dr. Drew's the responsible party I, here. I think but Drew is on board with it. Yeah. But l hmm. let's at least agree on this. It can no way be as big as his femur. I mean, because from your knee to your hip, you, you know, I mean, even on a you know, regular size 15 year old kid, that's, a, that's 16, or 14, even, 16 inches. Even easily. as an infant, the, you doctor, shoe on it? the doctor would have immediately yeah. noticed it as when, it, when he was born, and it would have been removed, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, it would have. And you it wouldn't would have think. been about money. No. I mean, it's, it's that, that kind they of stuff. They would have said it has done. to come off, period. Yeah, absolutely. The, I guess. Where were you born? Yeah, right. maybe he was born another in another country. country. Yeah. Where were you born? I was born in Carson. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is uh, that that explains it. it. Yes, yeah, Riverside, Carson, and Bakersfield See, don't does, have does any he, procedures. Yeah, here's here's yeah. a remember. I really don't know the whole story. Andrew, does he seem like somebody, told. Adam? Hang on a second, Andrew. Who's who's processing, trying to one up us and thinking? Well, no, yes. no, no. He's, he's telling he's, you what's on his mind. He's got. I I understand that his story is sort of checking out. It's just boom. But it's I what can't. It is. I can't, Andrew. Are you are you real? Let let me just describe the leg one more time. Is it no, is it no, really no. is it really? How does your hip? How does your hip work? My hip. is yeah, kind of like funny. <laughs> like I, it's. It's kind of like sort of lopsided a little bit. Is it sort of folded over at one point and then this other leg comes off? Um, a little bit, like yeah. towards the left, yeah. a little bit, but like. It, but uh, he was I saying had, the leg had, had movement trouble. in it. Andrew, are you uh, have you resigned yourself to just accept this and you're not going to um, get it? I mean, do you want to get it? Um, fixed or removed because it seems the only thing that's on your mind right now you're 15 years old mm -hmm. and you're worried about reproducing um, it, th isn't there a more immediate concern of getting the thing taken care of so, so uh, there might be an opportunity to pass your genes along <laughs> and it's going to be hard getting laid with that that's thing. what I'm saying yeah, if he yeah. wants to pass those yeah. genes along right. right I really like I'm like mostly staying at home I'm homeschooled everything's done at home because of this deformity yeah and I'm like I don't know I just feel well, like then what are you so you sad Andrew this, if this is a real call it's very sad I mean I I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do you're supposed to get it removed I don't even know my options how am I going to pay for it I will tell you your options now, mm -hmm. sound, now I sound like BS what about this I know this sounds radical how about instead of removing the leg we add a third arm just to kind of the add some symmetry outside. on the other side. Mm. Like, that is an expensive operation <laughs> you're talking about. Right. No, Andrew, really, I, we can't, really, I, I, I just don't believe you. Leg is like it's. Okay, let me just ask a few questions about this third leg. Mm -hmm. In in inches, how long is it? Okay, hold on a second. Actually, have a ruler. Hold on. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> when you're homeschooled, you got all your equipment right there in the bedroom. Compass, ruler. Yeah. There's lockers right there in the Size right in the entry hall. hall. Vans Hold slip on. on. Your aunt's teaching you? The Eleven and a half inches from pelvis area to the foot. To to the toe. And and how many toes does it have? It has normal. Uh, no wait. All right, he's lying. <laughs> you gotta no check way. this out. <laughs> wait, come wait, on, wait. man. You're 15. Every you've had this thing on your body your entire life, and you don't know how many toes are on it. Wait, what did you? Something about toes? What'd you say? Oh, oh. How, how many toes? Liar, whore, liar, whore. You know it. How many? How many toes? It's, it doesn't have all the amount that my normal foot feet. Have. How many? It has four. Four. How many does your normal feet have? Five. And uh, and how? Like uh, if you get a pedicure, regular price. <laughs> 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 and and so four toes and in in a heel and an arch and an ankle. No, it's really kind of deformed. It. Andrew, can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. Do you wear a shoe on it? No, I don't. No. And ah. and and can it be tucked down? I mean, could you can you move it wherever you need to move it? it? Be, no, I have to practically like grab it and push it towards. It fights you back. Does it kick you? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it has movement on its own, independent to you. Um. A, a very slight amount, like it'll, I can make it go out a little bit, but that's about it. So if like if you were signaling for a turn or something on a moped? <laughs> yeah, sort of, but not quite. That's oh, not possible. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> this is the thing, this Andrew. Is a, wait, this is the thing. If, if, if you're... If you're pull, I don't know. If you're pulling our leg, <laughs> then, then you deserve to be laughed at, you know. But if it's 
a real call. Right. And this is very sad, and I feel terrible for laughing. All right. So Let, I'm really in a quandary. We, we need to take it as a serious call and say that you must present yourself to a, to a university, yeah. and, 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 and they'll take care of it. They'll probably be very interested in sure, it, absolutely. and you can uh, talk to say So he's in Torrance. Where where is Harbor, Harbor, Harbor General? Go to Harbor General. Just uh, just to have your aunt or your mom or whoever drive you down there and let him. But I just I can't believe that that Drew would a doctor. This guy was born in 1986 for Christ's sake. Yeah. In 1986, is a hospital going to let the guy go home and never follow up with it? It's Carson we're talking about. Yeah, that's yeah. True. That, that is true. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I forgot about that. Carson General. That's right. That's right. They still got. Uh, there's yeah. still there was like some bleeding. The large animal bleaching. clinic is right in uh, the sheriff well, facility. Hawaiian Gardens is next door. They want Ooh. to run away to that garden spot. You see. Yeah. Wouldn't you? I, 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 if you moved from out of state and you just moved to Hawaiian Gardens sight unseen, do you think you'd have a legitimate lawsuit yeah. against, against that city? <laughs> yeah. your, your Honor, when I, read, when I read Hawaiian Gardens, I thought I was moving into some sort of tropical utopia and mm -hmm. it's uh, nothing, nothing, but, uh, nothing but industrial parks and gunfire. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would sue. I think you could sue the, uh, fam the uh, planners of the city and make some money. Huh. All right, Cody? Yeah. You're 19? Uh, yeah, um, Adam, Drew, you guys are gods. I love you. I listen to you every night for about three years. Thank you. How many legs? Uh, I have two. All right. Yeah. Uh, Adam, uh, my girlfriend gets jealous about how much me and my guitar player talk about you. We talk about you every day. Thanks. What's the name of the band? Uh, we are actually, we actually, uh, knocked off your name Sprue. Sprue. <laughs> but, uh, we're actually coming up with a different name called Mediocre Presidents. All right. right. Didn't we have a? I like Sprue. What was the name we yeah, had? Sprue. 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 Sprue's got a ring to it. Celiac Sprue would be good. Yeah, thanks. Um, Hate Plow is a name Hate I've been Plow, tossing around right. for a band. I think would be a good, good edgy sounding yeah, band. Cool. How about not, how about we're Sprue? Not Sprue like Plow. That. We're going to be more uh, more punk like Bad Religion. How about Aspirin Feast? Cool. Uh, That's a good name. I hadn't thought of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly good if you're noisy. Yeah. All right, so uh, you have a question? Uh, yeah, actually, I hate to say it, but I made up my question to talk to Bad Religion. Here, there. All right. Um, Mr. Brett, you, you're you incredible. Me and my friend Bobby, we talk about you all the time. He thinks you're God. Well, I assure you I'm not. Uh, I, I hope you aren't. He's demigod. Yeah. Right. No, um, no. In, uh, in the Flat Earth Society, yes. the chorus, you know how it says... Uh, the bright ship humana is sailing far away. Yeah. Uh, what what were you referring to in that? I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember. It was, uh, it's whatever. No, you no, made it, it was. It was. Um, yeah, it was. Um, it was the. Um, it was the uh, mankind's progress, kind of um, moving moving forward mindlessly and um, without deliberation. Okay, I just wanted to know because uh, in one of my songs that I'm writing, I quote the uh, I quote that right there, and, uh, and I just wanted to you know get my get my bearings straight on that. Yeah, you know, it, it seems like it seems like we uh, sometimes um, we uh, we indulge in technology for technology's sake, and progress isn't really progress, and so, that's that's what it's getting at. Like when you get interviewed and people want to know what your mindset was when you're ripping off bad religion, you can tell them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you just wanted to clear. The, basically, he said it was okay on the radio. I have it written. Yeah, that and I was also wondering in uh, I Want to Conquer the World, yeah. where it says, uh, is your fecundity a trammel or a treasure? Right. Uh, me and my friends looked up uh, fecundity, and it, isn't it the same as fertility? Yeah. Uh, could you have just used fertility, or did you use fecundity for big word sakes? Uh, I used it because I liked it. I liked the phonic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I liked the, the phonic quality. It had yeah. more of a in it. Yeah. Oh yeah, we think it. We think it's great. You know, we think everything you do is great. All right, guys. Thanks. I just Jeez. want to say thanks for uh, all the inspiration you've given us. Thanks for being being so supportive. All right, thanks. Ghost Brew. Thanks a lot. All right, all right. Uh, I want to. We're going to hear another bad religion song. Drew, read the box with the uh, song title in it, and what does that mean? Tell him not to hang up after. I think he was talking about uh, what we were talking about here. Oh, the, the kid, guy with the, the leg. Guy with the leg, yeah. Really? All right. Well, we screwed that because we hung up, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can call back. Well, let's all uh, let's make a little comeback with uh, some more bad religion. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> this uh, song is called uh, "The Defense." Thank you. Brent and Greg uh, headed out to the uh, car to hear the song yeah. over the radio. To hear They're in the, the car right now. Went. Get out of the car. Unacceptable. How does it sound, guys? 
pretty good. Really good out there. Yeah, pretty good. See? Well, pretty we got good. It's because we got a rental car, and, uh, you know, rental car stereos are not very good. Yeah. But right. uh, it sounded really great coming off of uh, the K-Rock compressors. Yeah. Uh, see? Now, different... <laughs> see? Uh, see, I, it sounded great in here, but uh, the band was uh, explaining about compression and well, how you that got changes. These, this is, these are killer studio speakers in here. Right. You know, 99% of the people who hear that song are going to be listening on those crappy car stereos. So uh. the goal when you're making a record is to make it sound great for everybody on the yeah. crappiest speakers yeah. you can find. Huh. Right. And if it sounds good on those, it's going to sound great in here. Interesting. <laughs> and and, and uh, so uh, when stuff gets put out over the air, it gets compressed... Yeah, they uh, they add top and bottom and compress it. Yeah. And, and are, is it different for different radio stations? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Most of the radio stations, if they're not a class act like K Rock, um, they they have some schmo who doesn't even know how to um, set the compressors to make it sound good. Wow. Sorry, <laughs> we're we're really sorry. Yeah. Wow. That. That's no. a no, no no that is a professional uh, um, name. It's a schmo. That's uh, a, oh, uh, schmo. <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's what you call the like guy a, like a who adjusts your a schmo. A compressor. A, a Grip. S- oh. SMO. It's oh, I see. I thought it was a derogatory. No, wait, wait, do that again. No, no, no. no. It's not derogatory. No, this, <laughs> this is, this is, is the schmo. The schmo's off. Right? I heard that. Go no, talk at him. Yeah. yeah, the schmo. He's, he's in there working. The schmo's <laughs> a very desirable. Uh, it's a very jo- a desirable job position. <laughs> Ethan, <laughs> we're going to talk to Ethan. When we get back. Oh, we're going to come back? Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. I've had a better relationship here tonight. <laughs> I'm going to talk to the schmo when we get out of here. We'll, uh, we'll beat the schmo <laughs> after this. Hey, y'all. Love line. I'm Adam. That is Drew. Bad religion in the studio tonight. In the house. In the hizzy. Over here. Right. Three, uh, 311 in here tomorrow night. And well, uh, the schmo needs to fix them. Fix them. Get the mic on the mic. Schmo. 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 <laughs> Check the schmo. We will uh, get back to the phones and speak to uh, Alex, who has a question for bad religion. Alex? Hello? Hey, hello. Hello. Hi, Alex. Thanks Hi. for waiting, Alex. Oh, no problem. I, I'm really excited to talk to you guys. You're one of my favorite bands of all time, I'd have to say. Well, Thanks we're so excited long. to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, uh, um, first question, uh, were you guys influenced at all by Frank Zappa? Because I noticed that uh, uh, since Bobby Shayer left the band, um, and uh, is it Brooks Wackerman? Yep. Yeah. Chad Wackerman's little uh, brother. Yep. Yeah, very good. Very observant. <laughs> well, I, I read that on your guys' website. Oh, okay. Well, that's still observant. <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah I have, my brother's actually a drummer, and we're both... Um, so what's the question? We, 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 yeah, Brooks is a great drummer from a great family of drummers, and... <laughs> no, he asked if we're influenced by Zappa. No. Oh, right. Um, not really uh, in bad religion, although I really love Frank Zappa. I wouldn't say that he served as an influence in our music. Oh, yeah? Do you think he's in beard and half a pretty profound <laughs> impact no, on the band? Not much. <laughs> no? Okay. No, uh, a little bit. Whatever. I was really helping just, that. Is this uh, uh, testing? Uh, Can we get the schmo in here to work on Jay's mic? I, I need a schmo. <laughs> Hello? Jay's, Jay's microphone has some distortion. Hello? A- Alex? That's better. Yeah. That's better. Any, any other questions? Yeah, um, I was wondering, okay, like songs like on um, Leave, Leave Mine to Me and um, I think on The Promised Land, you guys kind of use this kind of like relativistic kind of I don't know, language. And I was wondering if you guys really buy into that sort of... Well, what's a relativistic? He means cultural relativism, I I assume. Yeah. I am not a cultural relativist at all. I believe there's a a single truth to the way things happened and a single truth to the way things are. And uh, it's science's job to try and figure out the truth. What is what is cultural relativism? This is not helping the ratings at all. It's what, no, no, it's, what, it's what you talk about when it's it's okay for one culture. We're yeah. not judge. No, I was just yelling about that last night. That's right. Yeah, I, I think some things are wrong and some things are right. And, and that's you know, that. uh, the Taliban beating women is wrong yeah. regardless of your culture. Culture That's and uh, doing things to kid, you know, incest is wrong, and no matter what right. part of the world you're well, from. Well, and it, we can go even a step farther and and uh, say that some cultures might think that the moon is made out of cheese, and uh, it's like, not. And and uh, it's like uh, cultural relativists would say, "That's cool, man. That's their yeah. way of seeing it." Right. right. Well, the the moon ain't made out of cheese, and, uh, and, that's it, and that. that culture is wrong. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> they can right. go ahead and believe it. They're free to believe it, but they're wrong. But they're wrong. So, oh, Alex, is that what you meant? So yeah, it is. Um, so I was wondering, so what are you trying to get at, get at with the uh, song, Leave Mine to Me? I, I mean, exactly, what, exactly what you're doing right now 
means don't do it, leave mine to me. Right? You're you're asking him a question about a song where he's saying, don't worry about what I do, you worry about what you do. Well, but also, uh, here's an important distinction that you have to remember. In music and art, there's only one real truth, and it's not that uh, important. The only one truth is, th is what came from the mind of the creator of the piece of music or art. Um, and that truth isn't that relevant when it comes to um, a fan or a listener's interpretation of it. So leave mine to me just means leave my interpretation to me. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Have fun with your head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gonna explain. Hey, Jake. Yeah. You're 13. Yeah, man. Um, there's a girl right there in the summer. Right. And, uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> and um, we were uh, we would make out or whatever, right? Because we worked at the same after school program. Right. I know. And, uh, I'm pretty sure she liked me, you know, because we made out or whatever. Was she one of the kids from the after school program? No. Coworker. She's a teacher like me. I see. Oh, it was not like teachers like CIT. Cause I'm only thirteen. Right. But um, wow. Yeah. Uh, like uh CIT I counselor in training, is that what that means? Yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. Right, not now a schmo. Uh, what? Listen. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so now it's like during the you know, school year and uh, I called her because um she gave me her number or whatever and um <laughs> she like didn't stay on the phone long and she was just like it'd be better if she called me and now she right. hasn't called me. It's been like a month. I don't know what to do. Mm. She's scared of the feelings for, she has for you. Forget her. Too powerful. Forget her. I don't yes. know, man. Move on. No, That's no, it. I... Move on. Jake? I think so, man. Oh, yeah. 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 You have to. You have no choice. I sure something, you'll get, something you'll get good at as you get older. Yeah. This is an important skill. You might as well learn it now. Summer fling, you know? Like in Greece? <laughs> don't mean a thing. You smoking a lot of weed, Jake? Uh, not yet. I'm waiting until the end of his grade. <laughs> oh, wow. Smart. Wow. That's there when you, you make, that's when he pounds. <laughs> that's, that's when you make that transition in your grade. Stay good. Yeah. If you can make a, a, a good decision like that, then you can take, um, Drew and Adam's advice, I think, and move on. <laughs> Wait, waiting until the end of the eighth grade. Yeah, cause all my friends do whatever, but. Well, why don't you wait till the end of the ninth grade? Because that's when you shift schools, isn't it? That's when you go to high school. Yeah. Right. Actually, there's some evidence that you should really wait till eleventh grade because before that, even s relatively small amounts of pot can have been shown to possibly hurt people <laughs> to affect your development anyway. All right. So you really start now. Can he eat brownies until 16. then, or no more? Sixteen. 16. 16. And in the tenth, yeah. tenth grade for brownies. Why can he eat cookies? No, you're not supposed to eat the cookies. Oh, cookies. That's got sugar in it. You don't want any part of that. Uh, That's right. All right? All right, man. Hey, also, um, uh, I do a little music thing. I was wondering if I could uh, play you guys some. What do you do? Uh, I, I kind of do rap, and I know that's not a big thing down. Yeah, it gives uh, a little rap. I like right, rap. We'd like you. to hear rap. It's just an instrumental, but I think I like oh, it. Oh, no, 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 no. No instrumental raps. Bitch. That's not I didn't know there was such a thing. How can you do that? Well, it's silent. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Go ahead. You ready? <laughs> all right, man. Hey, just let me go get the CD. All right. All right I'm, uh, I'm going uh, to put you on hold. Listen, uh, if you're going to ramp, you got to ramp. You, you yeah. can't play the spoons. He's got to get a CD. <laughs> He's got to give us some freestyle right now. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know what I miss? I, I miss guys playing novelty items like the saw, the spoons, the jug. You know, remember a guy every every like every once in a while would pop up on some uh, late night show and he'd have a saw that yeah. he'd be playing. Uh, yeah. Melancholy baby on. What, what you, happened to that art form? But do you, you really miss well, it? Well, there's a reason just... that it's gone. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, uh, there's a reason that those things didn't persist. I, you know what? Quite frankly, I think what happened is with the advent of power tools, a lot of people just got away <laughs> from the old hand saws. Yeah, and, what are you gonna kids, They're not laying around anymore. Kids didn't have right? access so, to that. That's right. right. It's all Nintendo and uh, 18 volt Makitas now. And well, the world plus, is... all the saws are really short. Those toolbox saws, and they're not good for music. Right. They're those uh, little short little banjo ones. That's the, the uh, one. The uh, yeah. Well, you know a lot. You know, know a lot about songs. I'm a lumberjack. Right? All right, we're gonna <laughs> talk during the break. Matthew, hello. You're 23. Yes. What's I have up? A question for Bad Religion. Here they are. Shoot. Hello, I got your new album. I was at the Epitaph uh, store. Wunderbar. Um, Monday with the Noise Conspiracy. So it's really good. The Epitaph what? Thanks. Store. The Epitaph, you know, headquarters on Sunset. Oh, do you mean our office? Yes. Okay. The store. And you just happened to pick up a new record? Well, uh, Inge from the Noise Conspiracy picked one up, so he told me it was out. So awesome. 
<laughs> it's not out actually till January 22nd. Oh, well, he told me the warehouse had some, so I grabbed one. It's really good. So, so, what you. you're saying is you pilfered one from my <laughs> office. <laughs> you <laughs> stole <laughs> one. That's okay. Uh, from I have permission from the librarian, I swear. <laughs> All right. Dude, Adam, he wiped it. From the <laughs> librarian of my store. Well, just listen in good health. <laughs> so what a, um, I'd like to hear both Brett and Greg's different opinions and experiences about um, that religion's move from Epitaph to the major and back to Epitaph again, and just about political punk bands in general being on major labels. I know Brett wasn't in the band during the major label years. Oh, this I know was. The punk scene gave you guys a lot of flack for the move, so I was just curious about your different Well, both factually, different actually, Brett was uh, with us when we recorded our first major label record called Stranger Than Fiction. That was um, our, our, one of our most successful ones. Right. He wanted to hear both our takes, so just tell him who you are. So. Oh, okay. This is Greg speaking. Okay. And I'm going to tell you something about Brett. Okay, yeah, just your advice <laughs> to other big political punk fans regarding major labels. I actually have an interesting story because it's so uh, boring. Because most people want to hear when you go to a major label that there was this big, mean guy standing over you, forcing you to write hit songs. But actually, you know, there, there was very little of that at all. And... Um, there was no creative uh, interference at all. But the worst thing about it was that Brett was not with me. So yeah, um, this is Brett speaking. Uh, and uh, you know, as you know, or as you may know, I own Epitaph, and uh, you're not going to hear any a major label bashing from me. I think the whole issue is overblown. Well, it, it seems to me that they're not evil just because they're big. They they're evil if they try to water down your product or influence you in a negative way. But if that is not going on as much as people would like to believe it is, you know, Britney Spears is on an independent label. I mean, not too many people know that, but Zomba is the biggest independent in the world. And and you know, Radiohead Kid A came out on a major label, and it was one of the most uh, creative and innovative records of, of uh, last year. So, I, yeah, I it was it, not our experience. And, uh, the, and the Clash Ron uh, epic so that <laughs> eliminates all of. That. Yeah, but yeah, it's a the typical the way we think. And what, what would be in it for them to squash well, the I, creativity? Well, I, I think I think big is bad to a lot of people, as, man. As, especially if they're fans of the punk scene. And this is Jack, and this is Mike, and we're from TSOL. <laughs> oh, well, I thought Jack was on the phone. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, and we want to ask a. I'm giving a shout out to Jack and Mike from TSOL <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right, Matthew. All right, thanks a lot. Biggest, Thank you. Big is not always uh, bad. Let's uh, talk to uh, Bobby, who's 19. Bobby? Hi. What's up? I actually had two questions for you. All right. All right. One was, how does pot um, affect your sperm count? Uh, can drop it. Can drop it. It, it, it lowers your testosterone level, raises the estrogen level. It can drop. It could? Yeah. Uh, but it won't make you infertile. But as a 19-year-old, you'll still be able to do damage. Oh, yeah. With you, your you, penis, you so can, don't worry. Yes, you can certainly cause a pregnancy. Okay. Also, my, also my other question was... It's um, not a contraceptive. <laughs> right. Oh, if you wear the bong over your penis, like I've done on uh, numerous well, you, were, you were using it as a penis enlarger. Hey, you got to keep your thumb over the carb, though, because uh, that w it will come out. I thought that was a penis pump. Was that a bong? <laughs> hey, I've said no. many times, they ought to combine those two things. First off, it's, it's the same audience. You know what I mean? Same consumer there, pretty much. I mean, Interesting, yeah. Same guys who are spending money at the head shop for the for the bong or spending for the penis. Is Both Number work two, on the vacuum principle. How many? The sucking principle. There a couple of components, just a carb adapter. It's like just, a Swiss Army knife. All you need is all you need is one of those blood pressure pumps and a little a little carb ad uh, adapter, just a little air fitting that you could snap on, like they have for mm. compressed air fittings, and pump 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 I and think put we're it in there. Something here. So, so I don't know who'd want to use it next. Right. So is that a pubic hair on my bong? <laughs> but I think we could sell them on the Home Shopping Network. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we could. It's a big item. Yeah. Lovely. This okay. What's the second question? Bong penis pump. Oh, yeah. No. When your mom said, "Is this a bong?" You you didn't get indignant no. and go, "How dare you? This is a penis." Pump. This is private, Ma. <laughs> this is guaranteed to add three inches. What's your money question? back? <laughs> other question? Oh, okay, the other question is I watch a lot of porno, mm -hmm. and I was wondering, because um, I maybe masturbate three or four times a day, how does that also for, I mean, affect my sperm count? Uh, well, you let a lot of them loose, right? Yeah, it, it could be lowering it a little bit. Well, why are you worried about your sperm count? Yeah. No, I'm just... Do you know what you're asking? <laughs> I mean, why is that an issue to you, Bobby? Because... Um, I don't know. I just 
don't want it to go bad after a while. No, it's not going to go bad. It yeah, won't go bad. Really. It's even when you're an old man, you'll still have a sperm count. Yeah, yeah it doesn't run out. It doesn't go stale and it doesn't go sour. It no. just keeps going. And, Hold on, and, it can't go sour. And besides which, we've, <laughs> we've just recently cloned the first human, so men are obsolete. Aren't yeah, they? don't worry about right. it. Right. Society is, is, is not lucky enough for your sperm to go bad, Bobby. Yeah. It, you will impregnate many a woman on numerous occasions. That's sure. actually my plan. A good. That's right. Go that's forth, my son, and multiply. A lot of bobbies running around. <laughs> oh, with multiple bobbies. A lot of nice guys, hopefully. There you go. Okay also, there, Bobby. I also had to say one more thing before I hang up. Right. How come you guys don't play System of a Down anymore? What do you mean? They play it all the time. What are you yeah, talking you guys about? Play it all, no, you guys don't play it all the time when it starts. Like when the actual show starts. Yeah, We're playing right now. I, I don't know. I think we play System of a Down quite a bit. I heard him today on K-Rock. Hear it's that? playing right now. I would appreciate it if you can play it at the end when you guys... There you go. Whatever. All right. But we, Adam sings to it every night. Will that adversely affect his sperm? Yes. Okay. Let's take ourselves a little break. Bad Religion is here. The uh, One of the only bands that's actually good for your sperm. And uh, we'll take a break. Can we get the schmo in here? And we'll be back after that. Hey, I'm Clive Barker, and you're listening to Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew on Love Live. Adam Carolla. Please. English never get tired of putting an R where the A needs to be and never get tired of taking the R and putting the A there. Remember he was supposed to send me those books on book writing or something, some pamphlets? Yeah. Remember that? Clive Baca. Baca. Adam Carolla. Yeah. Never got it. Well, screw Shoot. him. Dude, he is a world class. No, no, he's not. I, yes. I think he just That's forgot. That's what you're saying. He just forgot. Bad religion. Think all the stuff we forget too, for people. Hey, dickweed. All right. Bad religion is uh, here tonight, and uh, the uh, new CD is out on January 22nd. We will uh, pop back to the phones and uh, speak to Jessica, who's 18. Jessica. Oh, turn that radio down, Jessica. I have it all put. Huh? Oh. Um. Hi. Hey. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. What's up? Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know what? We're talking about a penis bong right here, right now. A what? Hello. Yeah. All yeah. right. Go. Okay. Um. Every time I have sex with my boyfriend, like I have to watch the man show. In order to get an orgy. Why? An orgy. In order to get an orgy. Yeah. Well, that's the only way you can get one, I've heard. An orgy. It's in the TV guide, apparently. That's the only way you can get it. Get orgies. Yeah. Do, you, do you mean orgasm? Orgasm. I'm sorry. I'm a little out today. Yeah, a little. Today. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, and Was it, it Jimmy or Adam? Is or it, the, Adam. Yeah. Is it, is it my matinee idol good looks or my cutting wit? It's your wit and your good looks. Oh, man. You know all the right things to say. <laughs> yeah, so, I had, like, when I'm having sex with him, right. I picture <gasps> Adam's face. Where? Where? I'm not going down on you, am I? Because that's no, a policy. No, no, no. I don't like that. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Good. Oh, we could really get along. I didn't know you were a Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not Jamaican. No, no, not no, you. Adam, Adam, Adam. No, no. Oh. But Adam understood what I meant. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> No, I did. I, I drew, I've told this theory about black guys not liking to go down. I had a guy on a football team told me he would not eat anything that got up and walked away when he was done, and and I, I took that to heart. No, but no, black men will, but Jamaican. Oh, really? Well, no. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, interesting. Right. It's All right. Right. Hey, cu cultural relativism. Jamaicans have a lot of weird stuff. They have to think about homosexuality too. You were talking to them about that. Yeah, they yeah. get very. I mean, no way, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Jessica. Yeah. I'm flattered. Right. And, uh, you know, Sunday nights, 10 o'clock, Comedy Central. That's where you find your orgasm. Yeah. All right, baby. Oh, yeah. wait, wait, wait. I right. want to tell, uh, tell Bad Religion they're pretty dope. Pretty dope? Thank you very much. Word yeah. up. Yeah. Word really up there, Jessica. Good. Oh, Adam. Yeah, right. Yeah. When are you going to smoke some blunts? <laughs> when? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Probably this weekend. All right. All right. <laughs> At good times. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. This uh, right this now. acoustic Christmas is coming up, and once in a while, you do, you do make the mistake of getting stoned at that thing, and then I run into uh, general manager Trip Reeb and start getting weird. You know, it, it's not, it's not good. Best to wait, wait until the evening wears on when everyone gets loaded, and well, they're not, they don't rush to judgment as quickly. Why don't you get a costume, and no one will know it's you? Mm, that's like what? What should I go as? Like uh, like the Grinch. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, you go. Yeah, it does have a Christmas th theme, Drew. We should do that. Go as a Grinch. 
Yeah, you go as like Mrs. Claus, and I'll go see. I'll go as Wendy Lou Who. <laughs> Sarah, I like that. Uh, Sarah, hi. yeah. Hi. What's up? Um, first I want to say hi to everybody who's there. Hi. Uh, um, actually, this question was for Dr. Drew. Yeah. I wanted to know if you had sex, if I had sex with two different people, and one's bigger than the other one, yeah. is my vagina gonna stretch? Let, let me uh, let me see if what you're asking is. If you have sex, would one guy be able to tell? Yeah. If you're having sex with another guy. Well, the uh, no. the big guy's not going to be able to tell. <laughs> no, there's no way. But the the little listen. guy's going to be like uh, humping the Liberty Bell. Th that uh, <laughs> we're talking about a hot dog in a hallway here. Yeah. That that part of your body was designed to stretch and recoil. Okay. But but not like one one right after another. Is, it, is the one guy tagging out and the next guy stepping in, or is it, is it later that day? They don't know. Yeah. They're not aware of each other. Okay. What about your mouth? Same question, but about your mouth for oral sex. Does that come back true? That's a problem. That's stay, stay yeah, spread out. You yeah. look like a is like, this, like I, a bass. Can I wager a guess? Is this because uh, the smaller of the two is actually your boyfriend? Yes. Uh, uh, and so the big time. guy is... Uh, He's so the big guy. You're doing it on the sly, and you don't want your boyfriend to know. Mm -hmm. Why so don't you break up with your boyfriend? That's yeah. not worried about this. Sounds stuff. like the small dog's on the way well, out. I've been with him for a long time. I know. That's all the more reason to break up. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're just done. over. His, you're done. Wait, is it just over his penis size or? No, no. He's just it's done. More of the tension. Yeah. yeah. You're oh, done. okay. So right. He, He's yeah. not giving you what you need, and it doesn't have anything to do with this. this yeah, we, we tell a lot of people your age is that th these relationships drag on forever because you don't know when and how to end them. And when you're 28, you'll, you would end a relationship like this in three weeks. How uh, how long have you been with Johnny Smalter? <laughs> For like six years. Six years? Yeah. Yeah, it's over. Is it really small? How, how, is it, how small is it? Oh, it's not that small, but... Well, you can tell the truth. He doesn't know you're on the radio. No, he doesn't. Smaller. Well, he's killed himself by now. For you, so, so, so. <laughs> Either way, right? Um, I don't know. He's. I never measured it. I see. No. Okay. Wait, if he was okay in every other department, then the penis size probably wouldn't matter, right? No, it doesn't matter. I mean, he knows how to, like, you know. <laughs> no, this guy shows you more attention, the new guy, right? He's, like, more flirtatious. More yeah, he's more attentive. More attentive. You see, this, this is not fair. You know, this is like, it's like if you worked at a, at a, at a job for five years and you, they hired a new guy and your boss called you in and said, you're fired. This new guy, he's, he's, more he's all smiles. Yeah. He's, 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 he's just, got a bigger dick. He's, he's got a big dick. <laughs> no, of course. A, a new broom sweeps clean. I mean. For a while. For a while. Yeah. And then, because you're enthusiastic at the beginning. Yeah, but and you you're a great guy. And no, you can't do that. You've got to either break it off. You can't. You can't lie to a guy and cheat on him. No, you cannot. No, and and you you think you're doing him a favor by not breaking up with no, him. No, no, it's no. It's not no, a favor, no. especially after that long. That's not right. That's not even right. Oh yeah. Again. And then don't tell him about this guy and no, about no, the, no. the penis disparity. Just be nice and say, you know what, it's time for us to move on. Right. Yeah, you know, anything that makes you go around telling lies all the time isn't going to make you feel good about yourself either. It does. Uh, it does tend to wear on you, Robert. Yes. You're 18? How you doing? Good. How you doing? Uh, this call is primarily for bad religion. Um, I'm, <coughs> you guys are my favorite band in the whole world, and uh, I got into you guys when I was like a freshman, and ever since then I've just inspired to, you know, take a look at the world around me and not take the face value and just, you know, now thanks to you guys, my eyes are wide open, so thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And uh, Greg and Brad, I think you guys are pretty much two of the best songwriters there ever were. <laughs> thanks. And uh, Britt, uh, congratulations on all Epitaph's success. Thanks. Uh, it takes a lot to work your ass off and have a great art company like you got. And uh, I was wondering, if I'm going to see you guys on Saturday night. And uh, I was wondering, could you guys play the Fertile Crescent? Uh, probably not. We're actually rehearsing uh, this week. Oh yeah. And um, well, we're going to, you know, be playing a couple of these newer songs, and they're taking a lot of our uh, effort to That's get great. the arrangements down. That's great. Yeah, I got the new album ready too, like that other guy said, and. Uh, it's it's excellent. It's amazing. You're just pilfering your warehouse, Brad. I got it. You got to. You went somewhere. to Epitaph also? No, no, no. I didn't. It's it was a chance encounter at McDonald's. Yeah, there's a leak somewhere. It's no. a long, okay. It's a long story and and it, too long to get into, but uh, it's. You we know. want names, huh? We want names. I don't even know. Uh, grimace. But, uh, we just went by grimace. You know, th <laughs> thanks a lot for your support. It's uh, it's great to have great fans. Okay. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thanks, Robert. I, I, I will say that uh, Bad Religion definitely has uh, some of the smartest, most appreciative fans we've uh, heard on this show. 
I mean, you know, we do <laughs> talk to a lot of people who call in, and they don't seem to articulate themselves uh, quite as well as the uh, bad religious You go ahead and say yeah. it. Our fans are kind of nerdy, aren't they? Yeah, yeah they're nerdy. Yeah. We like that. If yeah, nerdy well. means smart, dedicated, and uh, into Jesus Christ, then then <laughs> then nerdy. Nerdy. Can, we get, the can we get the schmo to adjust uh, Adam's mic in here? Jeff. Calling all nerds. <laughs> Jeff? Hello. You're 24. I am 24. I am a super fan. <laughs> I like to call myself a bad religion. I, I just, I'm so overwhelmed. I tried to tell you, screen now how messed up I am right now. I got a million questions, but I am reading a book right now called Parental Advisory by Eric Newsbone, and uh, he mentions bad religion twice, and but he's not very specific. And my question is, has the band ever been a subject of any kind of censorship, whether it be on an album or on a concert bill? You know, that um, question comes up a lot, and we are actually, we've enjoyed very little of that in our entire history, but it's interesting you point out that book, because uh, I'd like to see what he, what the man has to say about it, well, especially also, one titled Parental Advisory. Yeah, well, also on Jello the Author's last spoken word album, he mentions you guys, too. He says something to the effect of each or a hard out bad religion, and I couldn't make any sense of it. Um, well, we're friends, so I'm sure it was nothing too derogatory. Well, oh, no, I didn't think that. Also, Greg, uh, when are you going to do another American Legion album? Uh, nothing in the works this year because uh, we're busy with the Bad Religion project. This will take us all through next year. Hey, Jeff? Yes? We're uh, out of time, but why don't you give us the name of that book? Uh, the name of the book? One more time so uh, the guys can go get it the name and then the sue somebody. Is, uh, Parental Advisory, Music Censorship in America... It was uh, published last year. Uh, it's by a guy named Eric Newsbum. Oh, sorry, Newsum. N U Z U M. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Keep Thanks the, for the call. On. We appreciate it. Thanks. Well, take a break. We'll be back with Bad Religion to wrap up after this.